Armando has again biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasuriga. In this video, we will look at what substances and cells are found in the blood and what they do. So if we were to take a sample of our blood, put it inside the tube and spin it around in a centrifuge, the blood sample will separate into layers based on how dense it is. So here I drew three main layers of that, that are found in the blood. The, the least dense layer on the very top is the plasma, which makes up 55% of the total blood volume. And this is essentially the water that makes up the blood. Then the second layer is the buffy coat layer, uh, which is essential, which makes up less than 1%. And then we have the uh, very dense layer, which is at the very bottom, which is essentially our erythrocytes, the red blood cells, that make up 45% of the total blood volume. Within the plasma, the plasma is not only water, it also contains other substances such as clotting factors. And we have 13 clotting factors which help us in forming clot and maintaining hemostasis. Now, in this video, we will mainly focus on the buffing coat layer, and we won't focus that much on the plasma and red blood cell layer, but I do have a specific video on the red blood cells and what they do, so you can watch that and I'll provide the link. So anyways, let's focus on the buffing coat layer. The, layer, the middle layer that makes up 1% of the total blood volume. The buffing coat layer contains two main things, platelets and leukocytes, or white blood cells, leuco as in white. Now, platelets are essentially these small things that help uh, in the clot formation, in forming clots. So, where do these platelets come from? So, how are they made? Well, Platelets originally come from cells. So what happens is that you have this cell in the bone marrow that have granules and it will become or differentiate into um, these cell known as a megakaryote cell. Uh, and these cell contains the actual granules still. When the megakaryote, when this cell ruptures through some process, it will actually release part of its cells with the granules, containing the granules. And so these parts and these, these bits are what we, what we know as platelets. So platelets are come from these megakaryote cells when they basically rupture. And what platelets do is that, as I've mentioned, they help form clots together with the help of clotting factors that are found in the plasma. Now the other component of the buffing coat layer are leukocytes or white blood cells. Now there are so many types of white blood cells and what they do is that they help our body fight infections and all this other stuff. So they're essentially the immune response. White blood cells can be divided broadly into two main parts. White blood cells that do not contain granules called agranulocytes or granulocytes, white blood cells that contain pathogen combating granules. So they do contain granules. Now we have, we'll fo firstly focus on the granulocytes, the white blood cells that do contain granules. We have three main granulocytes in our system. These are the neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Let's look at each one of them and see what they do in a brief picture. The neutrophils' uh, main function is phagocytosis of foreign agents such as pathogens or debris. In the process, they will, they will blow up. And so they're quite dangerous and highly inflammatory. The eosinophils are basically cells that are part of the allergic response. They secrete chemicals that will activate another cell called mast cells, and this will essentially promote the allergic response. Um, eosinophils also have a role in host defense against parasites, bacteria, and fungi. And eosinophils are seen quite, they're a big factor in the pathogenesis of uh, asthma. Then you have the basophils. Now the basophils also secrete chemicals which promote the allergic response. In mice, it's been, it's been found that basophils 
um, uh, are also antigen presenting cells, which are cells that can activate T cells. Okay, so those are the three uh, granulocytes. Now let's look at the agranulocytes, the cells that do not contain granules. We have mast cells, dendritic cells, monocytes, T lymphocytes, and B lymphocytes. Dendritic cells are extremely important cells in the innate immune response, the first line of defense. They are phagocytes and are the main antigen-presenting cells. And antigen-presenting cells means that these cells are cells that activate T cells, the T lymphocytes. Mast cells, they look like they contain granules, and they do, but they are not classified as granulocytes. Mast cells release histamine, and they are they're very big in the allergic response as well as the inflammatory response. And they release histamine um, when if there's an allergy or in the presence of a, a pathogen. The release of histamine will cause vasodilation and increase in vascular permeability. Now we have monocytes. Monocytes, they circulate actually in the blood and they are phagocytes, so they eat up things. But when a monocyte migrates from the blood into a tissue, the monocyte becomes what's known as a macrophage, big eaters. Macrophages have many functions, phagocytes, and they are also antigen-presenting cells, so they activate T lymphocytes, just like the dendritic cells. So what are the T lymphocytes? Where T lymphocytes, or or known as the T cells, can be divided into two main types of T cells. These are the CD4 T cell and the CD8 T cell. CD4 T cells are known as T helper cells, and they essentially uh, promote the macrophage activity, as well as they will activate the B cells or the B lymphocytes. Now the CD8 T cells are known as the cytotoxic T cells, and their main function is to kill infected cells, tumor cells, or abnormal cells. Now, just to confuse you even further, both B and T lymphocytes can also form memory cells uh, for a specific pathogen or a antigen. Um, and so there's actually T memory cells. So you have T helper cells, cytotoxic T cells, and T memory cells. Then you have the B lymphocytes. <laughs> the B lymphocytes, or known as the B cells, they can be divided into plasma cells, or they can be memory B cells, once they are activated. Plasma cells essentially secrete antibodies that help combat, combat um, allergens or pathogens. Then you have the memory B cells that are cells that form a specific memory to a particular antigen or agent. I hope that was not too confusing, that last bit. If that was, you can watch a video on the immune system overview just to understand what these T and B cells actually do and how they, are, how they, how they, how they function. So that concludes the video. I was going to talk a little bit about clotting factors, but I realized I did a big mistake. Um, but anyway, we have 13 clotting factors in our body. And that concludes the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching.